Welcome back. I'm Eve and this is A Town Weekly for the week of November 2nd, 2020. This week we'll hear from Ms. Charlotte Wood and the student editors of The Lantern. They'll tell about the past, present, and future of our award-winning literary publication. We'll also track down AHS alumni Carl Anderson, a Nashville-based singer-songwriter. He shares some stories about his path from Almoral to the music industry. But first, here's CJ with some important announcements. Hey, CJ here. Ms. Thorson in the library would like to let you know that the AHS Book Mobile will be making the rounds again this week. On Friday, November 6th, they'll be at the Abington community near the pool from 10 a.m. to 10.20. After that, you can find them at University Heights near the picnic area and laundry facilities from 11 to 11.20. They'll have plenty of great books for you to check out. A note from Miss Parsons to the AHS seniors and their families. On Friday, November 13th and on Friday, November 20th, the AHS Counseling Department will be holding a virtual college on-site admissions event. This is an amazing opportunity for seniors. This event gives seniors the ability to meet with a college representative from participating colleges and receive an admissions decision that day. Colleges can also offer scholarship money at these interviews if students qualify. Please see the newsletter below for colleges that are participating, as well as to see what each school needs completed prior to the event. Students will need to fill out the Google form by Friday, November 6th, so that we can create a schedule. You can find the link to the Google form in the description of this video. The counseling department will send a follow-up email with information about the event and times for students to meet with the representatives. Please make sure you're checking each school that they want to attend a meeting for. Email your counselors with any questions. Any student interested in learning more about the growing field of advanced manufacturing and electronics is invited to attend a virtual tour of PVCC's Industrial Electronics Technology Program next Friday, November 6th from 9 to 9.40 a.m. The event will include a demo, of the CAD process and, and CNC machine, a virtual tour of the PVCC lab, information on jobs in the field, and a chance to hear from a current student in the program. Class at 9.30, drop by to listen until your class begins. There is no commitment to attend for the full time. This is a free event hosted by Western Albemarle High School and open to the community. Please contact Mrs. Ratliff, Mrs. McCoon, or, or your counselor for the event this week. Finally, a reminder for Ms. Kaufman that anyone interested in being part of the crew team that's rowing for all you land lovers should contact her via email. There will be preseason conditioning for crew beginning sometime in December. And now, back to Eve. You may have already heard that the HS Literary Magazine is soliciting submissions for writing and art for this year's edition, but you may not know as much about the publication itself. This week, Will Gonzalez caught up with Miss Wood and the senior editors of the Lit Mag to get the story of The Lantern and find out how you can be a part of it. Hi, I'm William Gonzalez. Albemarle High School has a long tradition of excellence in the virtual and performing arts, and part of that reputation belongs to the Literary Arts Program and the magazine that they produce every year. This year is no exception. I had the chance to talk to Olivia Cogswell, The Lantern's student editor, and Miss Charlotte Wood, creative writing teacher and staff sponsor of the Literary Art Magazine about their plans for this year's edition and how you can get involved. Hi, thank you for joining us on Aton Weekly. Olivia, how have you been? Uh, I've been all right. Uh, this new learning environment, I think, is a challenge for everyone, but I'm surviving. Uh, tell us about your plans for this year's magazine. How has, how has COVID, the shutdown, affected the magazine and its production? Everything obviously is online and not getting to connect face to face with the other upper editors or the rest of the magazine staff, which are all creative writing students, not getting to connect face to face has had a real impact. And also that we're doing submissions in the fall this year, but I'm excited to see what what students submit and how we make it work this year because even in this environment we will make it work well uh, you said something about what was the last lit mag called it said you said uh, ambrosia does uh, do all of them have like a different name all of it is under like the lantern literary magazine that's kind of the title uh the, the title of our sort of magazine company yeah. Uh, but uh, every every edition has a different name. We are now the Lantern. Sometime in the 1980s, we became the Lantern. But before that, let's see. I can't remember the quite the order, but I do know that 
at one time we were the cauldron. So I guess we were a bunch of witches in a coven or something. Then we were, sometime we were the cauldron. Sometime we were called faux pas. Um, sometime, I think about the 70s, we were called Harlequin. And then we became the lantern in the 1980s. Kind of like, you know, we are a light, a beacon of light out in a dark world. So what, what's it like to be on the lantern staff? First and foremost, it's, it's a community. Whether you consider yourself a particularly like creative artist or writer or just someone who likes to read, it's, it's a nice place. And you, I made a lot of friends in that class that I would not have made otherwise. What makes the Lit Mag so successful is not only that students from across all throughout the school submit their writing and artwork to it, but we are essentially a family. So we work a lot together and we do a lot of great activities, field trips, team bonding, meals together kind of thing, which has been very difficult this year because of the virtual reality that we're living in now. It is a lot of work, especially when submissions come around, but you're all working together and sort of joined in that process. And you're creating something in the feeling that you are creating something that others will, that others will see and it gets sent off to like competitions for lit mags and different things. And it's amazing to see sort of the life of something you create. So over the years, and it's taken quite a number of years to get to the level that we have, and then we're trying to maintain it. But we have won highest awards from Southern Interscholastic Press Association, which is the All Southern Award. Um, we've won gold crown from Columbia Scholastic Press Association out of New York. We've also won All American out of National Scholastic Press Association and um, others as well, but we, our state won the Virginia High School League. The highest award you could get is trophy class. And we have gotten trophy class a number of years. We are actually the only publication in all of Albemarle County, and that's including broadcast, newspaper, yearbook, and lit mag. We are the only publication in all of Albemarle County that has won the prestigious Savage Award uh, from Virginia High School League, which is, essentially like a state championship. So what kind of art and writing do you usually publish in The Lantern? So we accept most forms of original art and writing, uh, emphasis on original. So if you created it, chances are we'd love to see it. Uh, we, for writing, types of writing works include original fiction, poetry, screenplays, and essays. So this can be everything from a personal essay you wrote for English class to a um, three minute screen uh, skit you had to write for drama or something. And sort of every, everything in between. So our big goal that we're trying to do is just to get the word out there. So students, if they, see any of these social media posts, if they can retweet them and do whatever they can. And if people could just please, please, please submit. Because we rely so much on the teachers encouraging submissions. And we also always had where not only did you have, could you submit it electronically through Google, but you could also physically hand in your um, artwork or your writing. And we don't have that option this year. It's all electronic through Google and so forth. And so it's just making sure that people just really trying to get people to spread the word and to submit. That's our real concern is that we just won't get the submissions like we usually have. To everyone, whether you submit or not, keep creating because this is a heavily unprecedented time. And a lot of times it is what, through what we create, that we have memories of it. All right. Thank you. Um, I'm pretty sure I'll be looking into getting a lit mag this year myself. But <laughs> definitely. Thank you. And if you have anything to submit, you should. <laughs> I'll definitely think about it. All right. Well, thank you, Olivia. Thank you for coming on A Town Weekly and giving us your thoughts. And 
letting us interview you for such an amazing project as the Lit Mag. Yep. Well, uh, thanks for having me, Will. <laughs> Last week, we met Morgan Meadows, an AHS alumni who's pursuing a career in theater and film in New York City. In this week's segments of Ongoing Feature, Eve tracked down Carl Anderson, another graduate from Albemarle, who's chasing his dreams in the music business. Here's the story. Hi, I'm Eve, and this week I got together with AHS alumni Carl Anderson. Carl is a Nashville singer-songwriter who shared his story about working in the music business. Can you tell us a bit about your path from high school to a career in the music industry? Are there any specific experiences or moments that you consider important in your path to what you're doing now? I was never in, uh, very academically inclined. I, I did well enough in school, but uh, my interests were in music and theater. And so I, um, for a year I ran cross country and then uh, transitioned into uh, just being involved in the theater full time. Charlottesville is such a great, um, diverse artistic community. And I was able to uh, get out and see a lot of shows seeing um, artists and acts from Charlottesville sort of go out into the world and seeing their music videos on MTV um, as a kid and, and uh, realizing that that was a possibility even to, to go out and really do it. And so I would say that the encouragement from the theater department at AHS and just uh, I what just had decided I wasn't going to um, go to college, I really, I hadn't done well enough to get into schools that I thought were really worth going to. So, and I had begun at that point playing um, enough music and recording. I had a lot, I had a handful of mentors and uh, people older than me that were already engaged in the career. And so I had, uh, I had people to, to look at and learn from. You know, I just worked day jobs and, and recorded and wrote songs. It's a challenging, um, thing and it you know it's not really there is no one way of doing it and so you just have to, I just re remember um, just having a lot of fun I I feel lucky to have been able to lose myself in the craft work and just I, I've had so much fun doing it how did your years at Elmoral impact your development as an artist what were the classes or extracurriculars that inspired you to make music or become a performer I guess like I said before the theater department, Faye Cunningham, and uh, and yeah, that uh, I I love that really got me through my high school years, and really just yeah, it really lit the spark. I just I think once I um, got on stage and was able to feel that energy from an audience um, going back and forth, I was uh, completely addicted to the feeling. My uh, my true love is just being up there on stage and communicating with an audience. And, uh, and so, yeah, without a doubt, um, it would have been theater, uh, sort of saving my life uh, in, through my high school years, definitely. And also uh, just recording um, in my own time at home with a PC computer and some um, antiquated recording gear then, you know, taking the cassette tape from my four track recorder out to my Volvo and putting it in the car and listening to what I'd done. And yeah, art programs and schools are um, just uh, so incredibly important. And I think there needs to be a lot more money pumped into those programs because they really, uh, they really help kids find their way. And yeah, I would, I don't know, that was like, that was the definitive. Um, moment and extracurricular activity for me. I saw you in a picture a couple days ago holding my sister when she was two years old. Well, it must have been the summer. Rain was falling down. Beating on that tin roof, I won't soon forget that sound. To pick a career other than the one you have, what could you see yourself doing? I have always loved cooking and I've worked in um, restaurants since I was a kid um, and in my adulthood as a way of uh, making money. I did in the process uh, fall in love with uh, that world. I think there there are a lot of parallels actually in, in uh, being a cook or a chef and, uh, and being a singer songwriter. There are years of um, hard work but with uh, diminishing returns often. You're not making that much money, but you're working 
And so I love, I love cooking. And in quarantine, I've become a prolific bread baker. And so, and I've actually um, been able to start a little business. Any advice for young musicians at AHS? You open yourself up to meeting people and uh, concerts. I, yeah, that was the one thing I, I, I was just obsessed with uh, listening to music and, uh, and discovering records and artists that I, um, and so I really just kind of like, Put myself in that in the environment and um, I would say to just uh, not to be discouraged because you know you're just gonna be you know you're gonna write a lot of uh, bad songs and uh, you're gonna play bad gigs and but just to sort of put your put blinders on and 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 engage in the work and if that passion is there like I said um, in my previous answer to your question that you know that will guide you and uh, you know, you'll, you're on a path, you know, and, and, uh, and I think if you're meant to be doing it, um, um, then, you know, you'll be taken in the right direction. I ain't exactly been feeling like myself these days. My baby's lonesome, I'm a thousand miles away. Gas turning dark when start to blow. I'm about it. That's it for this week. Make sure you like and subscribe to A Town Weekly on YouTube and give us a follow on Twitter for all the updates. And as a last reminder to submit your creative writing and art to the Lit Mag, here's an original poem by Olivia Cogswells. We'll see you next time on A Town Weekly. I am Olivia Cogswell, and this is my poem. Arm in arm. My fondest memories have become dusty, stained glass windows, neglected by time's careless housekeepers. Placed among millions of fragile moments for as long as a decade, I suppose I should be glad that they survived it all. The radiant colors bleed onto my skin as I press my fingers against the frosty glass and I long to become one with that simpler reality. Two young children standing together, arms anchoring each other to that jovial minute, listening for the steely growl of the yellow school bus. I have naught but one thought as I amble away from my museum of memory, hands gliding along the gritty marble walls. I look forward to seeing you and smiling arm in arm again.